Hi everybody, Scott here. This video is about sensitivity and it's really for everybody. Uh, it's for people that, that know that they're sensitive, that, that carry a sensitivity. It's for those that feel misunderstood in their sensitivity. It's for those that have been told growing up that they were too sensitive or that they needed to grow a thicker skin. Um, and it's for those that have sensitive people in their lives. So often what I say to people in counselling, and it can sound a bit strange or unusual, and I guess the language is a little unusual, but what I, what I often say to clients is that their whole self is welcome and that there's not, a, there's not a part of them, their internal world, that's not welcome in the room. And that's really just to speak to those deeper parts, those more sensitive parts that um, that need to know and need to hear that their sensitivity and their vulnerability uh, is both welcome and that it's a safe place for them to to um, have or be in that sensitivity. So while this is not uh, a counselling room as such, um, I just want to say to to those watching that your whole self is welcome uh, in this moment, in this room, in this um, video and that there's not a part of you that is not welcome in this moment. So uh, there, are, there are some of us that are born um, with an innate sensitivity. Uh, it's part of our temperament, it's part of our character and it's basically that it's like the nervous system doesn't require a lot of activity for it to feel s stimulated or overstimulated. Now that sensitivity can um, manifest itself in different ways. Um, it can manifest itself like uh, in sort of a vir environmental sensitivity, you know, sensitive to the changes in the environment. Uh, it can be, uh, you know, an emotional uh, sensitivity uh, both to uh, others' emotions and themselves and be able to really feel them in a, in a very deep way. There can be like a sensory stimulation where, um, you know, a sensitivity to light and sound, you know, too much light or too much sound uh, can just over uh, stimulate uh, the nervous system and it uh, gets overwhelmed, if you like and requires downtime or quiet or silence or something uh, in order to bring that um, that overactivity down to an optimal level. A good resource to look into that a little bit further is uh, a website where the link is in, in the description about highly sensitive people and it has a questionnaire um, around these sorts of areas um, to help sort of pinpoint the what area or areas you might um, have a sensitivity to. And uh, they also have a book, I think it's called um, Highly Sensitive People, um, that you can you could have a read of as well. So whether or not we're born with a, um, an innate um, vulnerability to sensitivity or we're born with, with that trait, quite often it's the environment that we grow up in that really determines how that sensitivity develops. And I just want to add that often when a person a person is sensitive, um, whether it's you know to sound or to to sort of certain environments or emotions, generally, if they if we have a sensitivity to one of those, we generally have a sensitivity to most of them. Um, and th there tends to be a, a correlation um, with empathy. But um, if we're born into a family that either doesn't understand sensitivity or sees sensitivity as a threat, um, then that sensitivity can get shamed, uh, causing the, the child to bury that sensitivity, uh, deny it, um, uh, reject it within themselves in order to survive. Um, and then that child grows up into adulthood, um, in a sense, rejecting a very key and core part of who they are. Now I think there's a few reasons for that scenario taking place. I think sensitivity um, 
if we grow up in a family where uh, where people aren't sensitive, uh, maybe the, you know often parents have their own issues, then a child's sensitivity is is like a threat to them because it's almost like a mirror. Like if a if a parent is behaving poorly, that sensitivity in the child reflects back to the parent that um, that there's something not right in the parent. And if the parent's not able or not willing to address that, then the child's sensitivity becomes a, a threat to them. And in a sense, a person's going to go one of two ways. They're going to address their own issue or they're going to shut down the child in some way uh, so that they don't get mirrored back uh, their own poor behavior through the sensitive, sensitive emotions of the child. And that's where you get, you know, grow up, you know, you, you know, develop a thicker skin, um, you're too sensitive, um, those sorts of things. And because a child, um, literally, their life is in the hands of the parent, then the, the child's going to internalize that and shut whatever they need to down in order to survive um, their childhood. There may be, you know, in the family, just more um, personality types that uh, uh, don't, um, it's not that they don't value, but, but they, they just live in a different space. Um, maybe it's more sensory or more, um, you know, doing, more practical, those sorts of things. And there can be a child that um, just is a sensitive child and carries a sensitivity and, and lives more in that realm. And if there's a lack of understanding of that deeper realm, then, then, a, then the child is only talked to or interacted with at a certain level. And that deeper level is not recognized or, or spoken into. And so it's like the child doesn't even know that it's there um, uh, and, and is only able to relate within the family at a, in certain ways or at a certain level. And so... <coughs> um, uh, and so they can, they can carry that deeper part of themselves into adulthood, but it's kind of, you know, we, we kind of need people growing up that help us to understand what is in us. So, um, we need, you know, we, we need our own emotions sort of reflected back to us so that we can identify them in ourselves. And if, um, if we don't have that, then there can just be a lack of awareness of our own depth growing up. I think the other issue is um, culture, that especially Western culture um, really looks down on sensitivity. It sees it as a weakness, uh, it's something to be exploited, and, um, and we can learn pretty quickly when we, when we become an adult and go out into the world that sensitivity is, um, is, a, is a liability, and, um, uh, and it's often uh, it can be taken advantage of, if you like. And, um, you know, our culture just um, values uh, more extroverted traits um, and more sort of aggressive traits, you know, people that just can just sort of plow their way through and get what they want and um, leave, in a sense, leave the sensitive people in its wake. So there's a few, there's a number of very key parts of our world that that can really miss it in regards to uh, sensitivity. Um, what I mean is, uh, you know, we can, we can be born with a predisposition to sensitivity. It can get shamed and missed in childhood, and then it gets um, exploited um, uh, or taken advantage of uh, in adulthood. And all of this just leads to a whole lot of pain for a lot of people. So what ends up happening is the sensitivity is, or the way I would put it, is the sensitivity is not the problem. It's the rejection and the denial of sensitivity that becomes the problem. Because when sensitivity is denied and rejected and, and pushed down, um, it's not protected in that sense. It's still vulnerable to being hurt or, or being um, exploited, if you like. Um, 
it's, in a way, it's more vulnerable because whatever there's a, there's a bit of a principle that whatever we deny or suppress usually ends up controlling us in different ways. So a sensitive person can end up uh, being their own critic in a sense that, that they reject their own sensitivity because they've been given the message that it's wrong, that it's weak, that um, that it it needs to go. So a person can end up sort of trying to develop this thicker skin, uh, trying to not be sensitive, um, you know, believing that it's wrong, and of course it doesn't work, and then the person um, ends up having a situation which causes pain, and then if that, to them, it becomes evidence that they're still not strong, that they're weak, that they don't have um, a thicker skin yet, which just leads to more shame and pain. Um, and in a sense, that's all um, unnecessary pain. So for someone in that position, they're almost in an ironic situation whereby they need, in order to um, manage their sensitivity and for it to be less, um, less a liability, in a sense, is to embrace their sensitivity, uh, to own it, to accept that it's there, and to learn how to live with sensitivity. Because in a sense, when a person embraces and accepts their own uh, sensitivity, then they can learn to manage it. And one of the reasons why it needs to happen that way is because they're going to experience less pain because they're no longer rejecting themselves. They're no longer rejecting, in a sense, the most sensitive part of themselves, which is their sensitivity. And so it's like they're no longer, you know, sensitivity is no longer um, a weakness and a, a problem. Uh, it's just something that they carry. And the reason why, why things can upset them or, or become, oh, sorry, they can be um, easily affected by things is because they carry a sensitivity. And then that just needs to be uh, managed in some way. It's important not to go from sort of one pendulum swing to the other um, and be uh, walk around completely open-hearted all the time. That's certainly not the answer. You know, I think it's important that we, you know, guard our hearts from uh, those that um, are not worthy of our sensitivity or haven't earned, is probably a better word, isn't haven't earned the right to um, uh, to to see or be on the receiving end of our sensitivity. Um, one of the dangers or the problems for a lot of people that carry sensitivity uh, or probably more importantly have rejected their sensitivity due to uh, problems in childhood is, um, you know, we can end up attracting similar types of people in our adult life that, that, are, that are also insensitive um, and uh, without going into that in a lot of detail, uh, that usually happens to try to wake us up um, to our own childhood to, to address it um, and um, to learn how to keep um, unhealthy people away from us and learn how to have healthy people around us. So I just want to say uh, here, like say it very clearly, that there is nothing wrong with being a sensitive person that it's actually an asset it's um it's you know we need sensitivity on in this planet on oh, sorry on this planet um imagine a, a world without sensitive people uh you know we it would look a lot different i think than it does today even with all that's going on in our world um if we didn't have sensitivity um uh the world would be um probably look a lot different so sensitivity um, is a gift. It's it has an ability to pick up on things. Um, there's, like I said before, a correlation with empathy. The, uh, there's a, the potential to be very empathic. It has the ability to be able to see things that other people can't see. And I just want to point out also that, like, if sensitivity is like an in an in, an innate trait in people then they're probably, as, as we get older, that's, that trait is probably going to 
um, become uh, better, if you like, in the sense that people probably become more sensitive. Um, like someone who has very, very good spatial skills. Um, uh, you know, when they grow, as they grow older, they just become very, like they become masters of, of the external world and, and their spatial ability just becomes more accurate, more acute, more, more strong, uh, sorry, becomes stronger and, um, they become experts in it in a sense. So why can't the same be true for sensitivity? That people with with an innate sensitivity trait, it becomes more sensitive. It becomes better at noticing things. It it learns how to go even deeper. It learns how to um, read situations more sensitively. So asking somebody who is sensitive to become less sensitive is actually going completely against their um, their 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 makeup. And that's where you end up with a lot of pain because, you know, we're, we end up trying to push against something that's natural in us. So, you know, sensitivity needs to be um, valued and appreciated. Um, and I think it first starts with ourselves that we need to value and appreciate it and learn how to live with it and learn how, how to um, use it as a gift, in a sense, in our, in our relationships and in our working environment um, and just in the world generally. Now, I just want a so bit of a side note here, just mention that a lot of people, or there are some people that have had this kind of background in, in the sense that, you know, they come from a troubled childhood where the inner world was uh, either ignored or shamed. Um, leading to um, pain in their lives, and then and then those people go out trying to look for answers, and and then people discover the MBTI, and they try and find some answers to their um, um, to what doesn't feel right on the inside, or they're just trying to learn more about themselves, and and people discover the MBTI and see the benefits of it. But I think some people can unconsciously be trying to solve those deeper issues or um, spend a lot of time in the MBTI, like either working out their type in some way, you know, struggling and thinking they could be all different sorts of types and all of this, spending months, if not years, trying to figure out their best fit type. And my sense on that is it's quite possible that that person is trying to get the MBTI to answer an, an unconscious question um, that the MBTI just can't answer. It's not designed to address those more complex um, issues. So for people that um, relate to um, what I'm talking about in the sense of coming from a tr troubled childhood and having that sensitivity rejected, uh, I, I wrote um, a three-part series on um, how to get in touch with our deeper parts of ourselves, those parts that that um, that we we try and hide from, in a sense. Uh, and it's called um, "How Is Your Mini Me," um, which basically means "How Is Your Inner Child." And you can find that on uh, my website. The link is in the description if you want to check that out. It uh, just it it comes off the um, internal family systems model, which um, is a very a very good model for helping people to just get in touch with um, you know, the various parts that kind of make up the self, if you like. So the first step is to just acknowledge and accept uh, and embrace your own sensitivity. Um, then it's about how do I manage that sensitivity um, in my life? And that can look uh, lots and lots of different ways. Um, uh, often, you know, often it, it's requiring boundaries with people. Um, it might require some adjustments in regards to the cer certain types of relationships um, that we're in. Um, you know, even could even come down to you know changing the working environment that uh, more supports um, uh, that sensitivity in a sense. Um, it may require um, 
therapy of some kind to work through some of those other issues um, that led to the rejection of self and the rejection of the sensitivity. And of course, um, you know, self-talk and, you know, the things that we think, the things that we believe, uh, you know, learning how to address those thoughts um, that can come up that want to reject the sensitivity. Um, and so, in a sense, learning how to reframe uh, what it means to be sensitive, you know, that it's um, it's not a weakness, it's... Um, um, you know, having a sensitivity means that there is a vulnerability to that part getting hurt or overwhelmed. Um, but that's just not about weakness. It's just what can happen sometimes. And then it's learning how to just address that, um, those moments when they do occur. And, um, and they will occur. On one end of the pendulum, we've got a rejection of sensitivity um, there's a, a denial that it exists. On the other side of the pendulum, there's, you know, kind of wearing the heart on the sleeve and having, um, uh, kind of living from that place of sensitivity, which can just lead to lots of problems and, you know, being, just reacting to everything, in a sense, being oversensitive. Um, uh, you know, having that part kind of controlling everything in our lives. The middle ground is where, you know, so, sorry, this, this side is sort of self-protection, um, and this side over here, there's no protection. It's, um, it's totally out there, uh, just reacting to the world. And so the middle ground is where there's an embracing of the sensitivity. There's an ownership of it. There's learning how to use it as an asset and um, learning how to use that, if you like, in, in a way that's both um, uh, rewarding to the self and re rewarding to others, while at the same time appropriately guarding one's sensitivity, or we could almost say one's heart, um, protecting it from um, situations and people that um, are unsafe for the sensitivity um, that uh, like to exploit sensitivity in a sense they like to feed off other other people's sensitivity um, so there's a need to be both um, guarding in a healthy sense but, uh, so that the so that sensitivity or the heart is available um, uh, in areas of life where it's needed, where where it's valued, and where it's um, where it's valuable, for people that you know might fit into the highly sensitive person category, it's really just a case of learning how to navigate that that the external sensory world in a way that um, doesn't over uh, stimulate you know, the nervous system, uh, you know, limiting ex um, time uh, with others or time out in the sensory world, do whatever, it, whatever the sensitivity is, just learning how to manage that uh, to keep things at, a, at an optimal level. And what I mean by optimal level, it's like we all have a sweet spot. What I mean is, you know, figuring out um, how to live and find balance so that we're working and living at our optimal space, you know, where we can be the most creative, the most connected, the most self-aware and the most um, aware we can be with other people. So there's nothing wrong with being sensitive. It's just often when we reject that sensitivity that we end up with the problem. So we learn how to not reject ourselves. Um, it, maybe we need to address address those issues that led to that rejection, whether it's family of origin issues or whatever, um, that won't, that won't um, eradicate sensitivity. It'll just deal with the hurts that have complicated sensitivity. And then once that's worked through, then the sensitivity can be there purely as an asset and a, a, a part of the self, if you like, that can lead to a very fulfilling um, and... Uh, 
a, a very fulfilling life and uh, a well-connected life in the sense of connected with the self, connected with other people uh, in a healthy way and, you know, even connected to God. So I hope, um, you know, there's some of you watching this video that have felt those deeper parts, those sensitive, vulnerable, sorry, sensitive, vulnerable parts of you feeling affirmed and feeling noticed and feeling um, valued. And um, I, I hope that this uh, video has resonated with you um, and uh, I'll see you in another video.